Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest-running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during and after their time on the programme. Welcome to the next episode of Sausage on a Fork, and I am delighted to say that I have been joined for this episode by none other than Robert Craig Morgan, who played Justin Bennett. Robert, welcome to Sausage on a Fork. Thank you, Neil. Great to be talking with you. I love the podcast. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what we'll do, Robert, is we'll start the way we start every episode, and we'll go right back, and if you can just tell us how you got into acting. Okay. What it was, it was, a, it was a, by chance, really. Um, it was the summer holidays between primary school and me starting my secondary school. Right. Um, and my mum had the radio on, listening to a show called the Pete Murray Radio Show. Uh-huh. And he was interviewing um, a director called Brian Gibson. Right. And he was having trouble casting uh, part of a boy in this two-hander drama by um, Dennis Potter. And so he was putting it out there um, for any kids that were interested in, you know, doing school plays or what have you, right. to uh, ring up and see if you could get an audition. So I was with my cousin, uh, Mandy, at the time, who was saying, Rob, come on, you like, you know, you like doing school plays or what have uh-huh. you. So we, we rang and we got through. And to cut a long story short, um, I got down to the second boy in the running. Right. And uh, although I didn't get that part, um, the director recommended an agent to me, uh-huh. and uh, so my mom and dad had a you know a, a long chat, making sure that it wasn't going to ruin my education, yeah. certainly as I was going to be starting a a new school. Mm-hmm. But um, so we we joined the agency, and very quickly after that, um, I got an audition for I Claudius. Um, right, it was the, the the classic kind of Roman drama. Um, with Derek Jacobi and, and, and loads of big names. And I got cast as the young Caligula. And um, that was really it. The moment I, I recorded that and I'd go for other auditions, um, people were so interested because the program um, had come such a hit. Yeah. And then um, one day um, my agent Doreen rang me up and said, there's, a, there's an interview for a, a new ch- a children's drama called right. Grange Park, as it was then. Uh-huh. And uh, so I went along and I met Colin Kant and Anna, Anna Hume, the producer. Mm-hmm. And she had remembered me as well from another audition. Right. And uh, they, um, they kind of said there and then that, you know, you, you'd be right for Justin because I explained I wasn't, you know, much good at sport at school. <laughs> <Right>. and, <laughs> bit of the swat, I suppose, really. And uh, yeah, so that was it. And then um, I was only meant to be in Greenshaw for um, the first series. All right. I fall, okay. Yeah, I fall off the roof when um, Tucker and yeah. Justin and Benny break into the um, the warehouse. Uh-huh. And um, the original plan was that Justin's parents were going to take him away from the school. But, um, ah, right. Okay. Okay. But the and- day that the, the day that episode screened. Colin Kant actually rang. My dad answered the phone, and uh, Colin said, "Can I can I have a, a word with Rob?" And uh, he asked, "Would I like to come back?" And that was it. And I did it for another four four series. Brilliant, so brilliant. Yeah. If, if we can just go back a little bit there, Rob, just just back to uh, I Claudius, because that was like a sort of big budget BBC mm. program, wasn't it? And you, as you say, it you played good. you played Caligula. We, yeah. did, I, I mean, I've never seen like Claudius. I, I, I was only, well, I wasn't. I'm just looking at the date, 1976. I was far too young then yeah. um, to be watching that. <laughs> I don't, my mum and dad wouldn't have let me watch it when I was uh, one years old, I'll be honest. No. Um, but you played Caligula. Did you, yeah. <laughs> did you have to play <laughs> anything like the way Caligula, you know, the story? Yeah, told? I did. It right. was, it was pretty, it was pretty controversial, really. Um, right. That when when we first looked at uh, my bit in the script, uh, I was found in bed with my sister, um, <laughs> um, n- naked. The pair of them, as uh, my grandmother says in the in the in the program. And nice. then I I poisoned my father. Um, uh-huh. uh, he he I murdered my father, and then I burned the family house down. <laughs> so, <It's okay>. Yeah. <laughs> so he was, he was a ni- he was a nice kid. 
Yeah, I mean that that that, that was the thing, you know. I read up a little bit on Caligula because the only Caligula I've ever seen yeah. depicted anywhere was in an episode of Red Dwarf, and it was in a, when there was loads of evil oh, right. characters, loads of evil characters from history. So I knew yeah. there was I knew there was a side to him, and when I read up on him, I thought, oh wow, I, I can't believe Justin Bennett could have done yeah. all these things. <laughs> yeah, he, he he was bad. Uh, yeah, and they they, they uh, first of all d- d- dyed my hair blonde. Right, and then that didn't work very well. It ended up looking green, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. so they put a wig on, and with my dark eyebrows and everything, I just look so weird, you know. <laughs> which, which the uh, director Herbert Wise thought added to the part as well. So, um, and uh, I was the young Caligula, and then John Hurt played Caligula as an adult. Right, and uh, it was great meeting him. He was yeah. a brilliant guy, and uh, so yeah, it was a big budget. Uh, more names than you can imagine. That well, that's it. it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I always ask people if they got to work with anyone, you know, famous in the early days. And just from yeah. that programme, you know, Derek Jacobi, John Earth, Brian Blessed, Patrick Stewart. I mean, I know they were all in it. You might not necessarily yeah. have worked with them, but they were all in it, weren't they? Like... Yeah, um, Patrick Stewart um, was in, in my episode. and Great. Um, he was great. He used to get the bus back um, after rehearsals with right. us. And, okay. You know, you think now that... <laughs> the Hollywood star he is. If you get yeah. the bus outside the rehearsal rooms, um, there were there were so many people. Uh, um, um, what's the name of the guy? It's in um, Kevin McNally, who's in the all the pirate films. There was uh-huh. Johnny Depp. Um, oh, it's endless. You yeah. wouldn't probably be able to get a cast like that because the BBC, you know, um, yeah. such names. And it was yeah. my first ever job. And it, the weird thing, Neil, was that I had to be twelve. Um, to film that because of um, licensing laws yeah. with kids in, you know, filming. And uh, I was only 11 when I auditioned for it. And they got very worried and said, well, when are you 12? And I said, July 21st. And uh, that was the day um, that they were recording that episode. Right, if okay. I had been 12 on that day, I, they wouldn't have been able to pass me. Wow. The amount of hours I had. So that's fate. So it, it was just <laughs> like fate, really. You know? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. It was but yeah, it all started from that. And, oh, um, brilliant. Okay, so so we, we'll move back to Grange Hill then. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, you were you were there from day one. You know, you, you've already mentioned yeah. the fact that originally it was going to be at Grange Park, and then it was changed, obviously, to Grange Hill. Yeah. And the character of Justin, he, he was brought in, I think, because he, he was very different, wasn't he? He was very different to yeah. to everyone else. Exactly, very. Yeah. And. He was, you know, he he was picked on, wasn't he? Oh, at, at first, yeah. yeah, yeah, at first, yeah, definitely. Um, I think because... it was it, it was a good thing to have a character like Justin, really, uh-huh. because you know the the other kids were kind of re- really strong characters, and I think it was a good balance yeah. for for other people to see a kid that was picked on, and and I, I know a lot of times over the years people have said, oh, Justin was a bit of a sneak and a swap. He wasn't really. He was just, no. I think, very misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and found um, such a big school like that very intimidating uh-huh. you know, for him. Yeah, so definitely. yeah, and I and I think it's lovely, Neil, that as the series um, went on, you see Justin getting, you know, more confident and stronger. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Certainly with his friendship with Andrew, and in yeah. the end, he, you know, he's hanging around with with Tucker and Alan and and everybody. So yeah. It, it was a clever little bit of writing by all the various um, yeah. different writers of the series to see him grow, develop, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So when you were on the programme, who were, mm. who were you closest to or like your best friends on there? Uh, well, I mean, uh, series one, it would have definitely been uh, um, George, who played Alan, mm-hmm. and Terry Sue Pat. We were very close. Right. Um, and then really a whole gang of us as the series went on, uh, we all got together. We used to meet up outside of the program, and that oh, would right. have been pe- people like um, George, I'd say, Paul McCarthy, uh-huh. um, uh, Terry Supat, and of course when Mark Eady came in as yeah. well. I was I used to have these parties back at my house on a Friday. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> <laughs> uh, much to my mum's, uh, you know, annoyance. And we'd all <laughs> we'd all uh, we'd all come down to Bromley, and we'd right. sit there and just play music and stuff. And People used to, you know, when we got recognised, were amazed that um, they were <laughs> all these kind of cool characters were 
hanging around with with Justin, you know. <laughs> but, but, but as I say, I was I, I was different from the part I played really, you know. I was I wasn't like him at school. I was a bit more uh, a bit more naughty, I think. Really, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. So, but Mark, Mark and I had a, a, a really close friendship, obviously uh-huh. for the amount of scenes we had to do and stuff. So yeah. But George, George has always been a, a great friend and brilliant, um, wonderful, brilliant, wonderful but- fella. And was there anyone who you particularly enjoyed working with? You no, know, like if you had seen, uh, you knew you had scenes coming up with them. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I suppose episode six of series one, uh, again in the the warehouse, I think it's called, or the right. um, ammunition stump. Yeah. Um, it was such a lovely time. It was just Todd, uh, Terry, and myself uh-huh. uh, on location, and we had a brilliant time filming. Um, yeah. You know, it was like a whole adventure for us. Yeah. And I really used to look forward to that. And likewise with uh, scenes with Mark doing the um, um, musical. Um, what, yeah. Um, oh, uh, uh, Technicolor Raincoat. You know? Yeah. And stuff like that. so I'd see those scenes coming up. And I, I, I used to really look forward to that. And with the girls as well, very close with uh, um, Linda and um, uh, Rudy Davis, who played Penny. So uh-huh. Penny and Susie. Great yeah. friends as well. And I mustn't forget, otherwise he, he'd be upset with me, uh, um, Philly Mann, who played um, Antonio in a, yeah. the character who sadly in the end fell off the carport roof, you know, to his yeah. death, lived very close to me. All right. And uh, we, were, we were great mates. And uh, he'd come on family holidays to my aunt's um, place up in uh, Northampton. So we were great mates at that time as well. Yeah. So it was a good gang of us. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean... The, the amount of friends, I, I, I can hand on heart say that we all did really get on. Yeah. I mean, characters like um, Vincent Hall, who played Doyle. Yeah. You know, the, the hatred on screen of Justin and, <laughs> yeah. and Doyle could be no different from how we were great. such good mates when we were actually filming. It was yeah. It was great. Great guy. Oh, so excellent. good times. Yeah, really good definitely. Time. Definitely. Have you got, I mean, you've mentioned a couple here. You've mentioned about the warehouse, the, you know, the yeah. munitions dump. And I, I, I'm, I'm fully aware that I'm, I'm talking about something that was over 40 years ago. Um, <laughs> just how safe was it in there? Well, it, it, it's good. It's a good question, Neil. In fact, I, um, when people have asked before, they've been amazed that they did take it seriously. And right. the, the fall I do was as high as it looked. Right. It, it, it wasn't faked in any way. Yeah. But they had a stuntman, which I, I just thought was absolutely brilliant. Who right. was the advisor of 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 you know how to actually fall from the uh-huh. edge of the building, and they took it very seriously. He rehearsed it with me. We did a whole um whole afternoon on the first day there, just practicing the fall. Right. And there were these huge inflatable um mattresses and things. Uh-huh. Um, but some of it was a bit dodged. You know, when we're doing the El Toro, um, yeah, <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> on, on the trolley thing, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a bit hair raising because. There was nothing to stop um, if Todd had gone too far with any of us on on, on the trolley. We yeah. could have gone down that staircase because well, there know, was no safety there. I, wa- I actually watched that clip the other day. Yeah. And there's a bit where I think, blimey, they've taken, they have taken that a little bit too far. Todd, I think it's Todd, comes off it and he just runs. Yeah. And then the camera cuts off. And I think, I was thinking, I wonder what actually happened after that, if, if he was yeah. all right after that. There were... There were there were a couple of dodgy moments on that up there as well because <laughs> there was a hole which I think must have been a chute right. uh, originally when it was a, a working factory, uh-huh. and they had just filled it with some kind of um, sacks, stuff right. with straw. And the first time that we um, crashed the trolley, we'd fall into it, and it and it kind of gave way, and, and yeah. oh, right. we okay. through. <laughs> so that was pretty hair raising. And the only other funny story about that was you have to listen out for it. Um, when the door slams on us and there's a cat goes tearing out. Yeah. Um, they had been, um, the, the BBC had got this company who had pet actors, trained animals to right. perform this bit. And uh, I, I'm not going to mention any names because I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't even remember her name now, but she had been talking and saying, oh, yeah, this cat's been in loads of commercials and a few films and knows what it's doing or what have you. So um, we did a thing called film to record, which was like, we'll do a sequence and if it for rehearsal, but if it works out good enough, we'll use it. Right. 
So we got the set all shot up, and she's there off, off camera holding the cat box. And at the right moment, when Colin gave the his arm movement, the cat was let go, and and that's the whole sequence. Uh-huh. And the cat did it perfectly, shot out the door, and was never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> And the woman was walking around for the next three days while we were filming there. I shouldn't laugh. Well, oh, I, mean, no I, love, way. I, I love cats. Trying to look <laughs> for this money making star cat who had, I think had decided I'd had enough and just wanted to run for freedom. So, yeah. Never, was, uh, ne- never turned off, no? No, never turned off. Oh, wow. So, so that little bit you see was the only shot they had of cats. <laughs> so, yeah. Amazing. Mad, I know. But, yeah, Amazing. but it was good. No, they they did they did take it very very seriously, and um, uh, it was great fun. They there was a little house at the end of the road that used to be like the factory uh, caretaker's house, and yeah. a lovely little old couple uh, still lived in it, although the factory was derelict. And right. um, we'd go in there to have to use the you know the toilet and have the odd glass of water, what have you. And they yeah. became great friends with us kids, so we were sport rotten. And yeah. It was just a lovely time. The weather was great. Um, I have, I think it's one of my best memories of the series. Yeah. Filming that, it's like Brilliant. a big adventure, you know. Yeah. So then that was yeah. that was the end of well, the end of your your participation in series one. Um, yeah. When you fell off the wall, Justin broke his leg, and, yeah. and got concussion. And, and so then we move on to series two. But did you have any idea just how big the program was going to no. get? No, I don't, Neil. I, I remember us all of us one day on the coach going out to uh, one of the uh, schools that we did all the outside shots on, uh-huh. and we'd sit there and go, you know, I wonder if this is going to work. Will, right. will kids want to come home from school <laughs> yeah. and then watch an load of other kids, you know, being at school? Yeah. And of course, it was the total opposite. Uh, every, every kid I think could find a character that they uh, I identified with, and. Um, as you were saying, when I, I, I fell off, off the roof, that was meant to be my last episode. Right. I got another audition and I went off to do a, a series for ITV. It was HTV in those days. And it was called The Clifton House Mystery. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, that was like a ghost story. It had Peter Salas in it. Mm-hmm. And so I'd said all my big goodbyes to everyone. It was very tearful saying goodbye to all my mates thinking I wasn't coming back. <laughs> right. And while I was uh, filming um, this Clifton House mystery in Bristol, uh-huh. um, it, it, the first episode of Grangehill came on air for the very first time. Right. So the whole crew and cast took a, a break from filming and we all sat huddled around this TV as wow. Grangehill came on screen for the first time. And this is the weird thing, Neil, that before that, my life, you know, you could walk down the streets and no one would know who, who you were, yeah. you know? Yeah, and the the moment that episode um, went out, I went back to the hotel where we were all staying, and some kids had been watching it the first episode, and I right. got recognised straight away. And from then, wow. it just turned into the you know the madness because it was so popular that everyone knew you. It's good answer yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Oh, um, brilliant! So, yeah, it was it was life changing that way. You know. Yeah. So then. We talked there, you were back for series two, and that was, you, we've already mentioned about Justin becoming friends with Andrew Stanton, and Andrew yeah. was in the, the musical, and Justin played the yeah. piano. Did, did you actually play yeah. the piano? No. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> no. Uh, it was a, a, another thing, a bit of cleverness. When they were recording the music um, for, for Andrew to sing and, and, the, and the chorus singing, they went to um, the studios in, in London, to record it to make it easier for filming uh-huh. and Colin Kant uh, said I should come along and watch the guy who plays the piano in the recording right. um, carefully to see kind of movements so uh-huh. uh, I, ju- I just watched him and learned how to give the actions of playing the piano so, no I've never been able to play an instrument <laughs> right. okay <laughs> okay and it, series two we, we did see a lot more yeah. of Justin didn't we in series yeah. two he, you know you Justin got a few more storylines and talking about things like uh, the cricket match. Oh, yeah. Versus yeah. Brookdale. And Justin wins the game. Sorry, spoiler alert yeah. uh, for anyone that has <laughs> yeah, never seen alert. it. Like. <laughs> yeah. So also in Series 2, there was the residential trip to, uh, I think it was Beaconsfield. That's um, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was that like, filming that? Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, pres- <laughs> presumably you went away somewhere for that. 
Yeah, we did. Yeah, um, right. they again they put us all up in a in a, a hotel, and um, which for kids was great as well, you know. But yeah. oh, it was it was brilliant. I mean, it really was like a holiday. Um, the, 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 I had loads of of mates who were um, just like oh, my earphones falling out. Sorry, background characters. Right. Um, and it was great working with them as well. Uh, so there was a big team of us. And uh-huh. I bet we were, pr- you know, pretty uncontrollable sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, beautiful place to to film, and uh-huh. uh, it was so different from doing studio and stuff like that that you know um, we were used to. So being out there was was really good, a great adventure, yeah. and um, we got on so well with the the actors who were our teachers as well. It was a uh-huh. really great time, and I think it's a great episode story wise as well. Yeah. You know? so, uh, I really, really enjoy that. Brilliant. I mean, that's where um, we start to see Justin change a little bit. I, that's I right. Think, yeah. You know, yeah, he, he, he is more involved with the lads, isn't he? A little yeah. bit more. But he also starts having to go back to the likes of Doyle and that. The thing I do like about that storyline is the fact that there's a wild puma on the loose. I know. <laughs> <laughs> as as always happens around the, yeah. in, in the UK. That's right, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were probably sitting scratching their heads going, what can we, what can we use as a wild animal there? You know? yeah. So yeah, a puma was randomly chosen. Yeah, I've always laughed at that myself. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. and luckily they didn't use a stunt uh, puma for that. No, no, there was no actual, no actual signs of the puma, was no, there, in the programme? No, I don't think the budget would have gone to that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as, like I say, you know, we, we do start to see Justin change there. And, and in the end, he, he, I mean, that was the thing with Justin. He always knew what was right, didn't he? And what, he, like, he, he wanted to be one of the lads, yeah. but he always had that thing sort of stopping him. So, yeah. you know, what was right and what was wrong. And, yeah. and, and when the girls go missing. That was he, the thing. I think that it, it, Justin's morals would always come in and he yeah. just knew that he couldn't leave two girls, you know, wandering around the woods when he knew what had happened yeah and as as night and a spell and i i think that's a good a good bit of the writing there as well that uh-huh. you know when doyle is really going into him yeah. uh, justin finally gets the strength to to say enough i'm yeah. gonna do this you know yeah and uh yeah and it, it is great that he does and of course at the end doyle has to realize that those girls were in serious trouble yeah if, definitely if justin if justin hadn't got the help you know so, i mean um, the one thing I love about that episode, um, obviously, like like I work in a school, and I, and I watch that episode, and at the end, they say to them, yeah. "Well, we're not going to tell the headmaster." You think, what? You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what? <laughs> you know the, the, these two girls went missing. There's been a massive police search for them. There's, there was an yeah. escape humor on the loose. It's all right, though, boys. Yeah. We we uh, we, we, yeah, we, won't, we won't tell yeah. the headmaster, and ho- hopefully, yeah, no we'll one just keep the this girls to ourselves. Yeah, the girls. Hopefully, the girls won't tell their parents what's going on. Or anything yeah. like that. Can you imagine? But yeah, I, mean, I, ju- I, I did. I, I did like that. Like, I, I think we have to put that down to the more innocent times. Looking definitely, back, at that. definitely, definitely. So yeah. yeah, so that was um that was that was series two, and then yeah, nineteen eight. Well, it would have been nineteen seventy nine. I imagine you were filming yeah. it on nineteen eighty. Sorry, um, it went out on on air in series three, and the thing about series three is it was when they brought in optional uniform, but obviously Justin wore uniform, didn't he? <laughs> no. I know. Can you imagine my disappointment when I read that? And uh, <laughs> I go to a wardrobe fitting, and I go, oh my, the uniform yet again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of, one of only that... three kids in the school still wearing uniform, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, I think Andrew was the only other one, and one of the girls, I think. I think yeah. Susie wore the uniform yeah. still or something. I can't remember, but... <laughs> But um, yeah, I, I think that was to try and 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 show Justin as being slightly different again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the kind of home he came from. Definitely. But yeah, I, he would have the ribbing he would have got if that had been in real life. You know, when other kids aren't don't have to wear uniform, yeah. and you're still wearing one. But yeah, and I think that gave I think it gave Justin his little uh, character as well. Yeah. And then you, there was there was more sort of um, outdoor and, and location filming in series three because they got the thing up about the outdoor centre. You know, there was a place, uh, there was, they were trying to get this this oh, yeah. building for them to go to. So there was another, I think yeah. it was another weekend away up there. But yeah. because of uh, <laughs> because of Alan smoking, <laughs> which, right. which to be oh, honest, yeah. 
in a kids TV program it was it was a bold move as well. I thought to show the yeah. fact that you know th- there are kids smoking underage because I imagine that would have been sort of brushed under the carpet a little exactly. bit be, be, before then. So I think to show that, yeah. and then, to, then to show the dangers of what could happen, you know, when, when yeah. it, it, it get, gets set on fire, like that, that was a good one again as well, and um, with the smoking and and of course you know. I think one of my favourite things, even looking back when I had the odd look at it, is Justin's look of disgust at Andrew <laughs> as he uh, as he takes a yeah. puff of a cigarette. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like that's the worst thing you could do. But, Definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've we, we mentioned Andrew uh, coming in being Justin's friends. I, I yeah. think that was good because they weren't the same, were they, Justin yeah. and Andrew? And Andrew was a bit more sort of, you know, in with the lads, shall, shall we say. He was a bit more streetwise yeah. than Justin. Yeah, definitely. Um, but he, yeah, I he, think, but I he think wanted was... to look out for him, didn't he? He wants to look out for Justin. Like, Yeah, big big time. And I think that's, that's a lovely bit of the writing there. You know, from that first scene where Doyle throws Justin's suitcase across the uh-huh. the playground and, and Andrew goes, you know, pick it up. Yeah, and uh, I th- I think that's great. He's he was always he always had Justin's back, you know. Definitely, because Justin was too terrified to yeah to confront someone like Doyle. Uh-huh. Uh, and I do think the character of Andrew uh, in the writing is responsible for for Justin coming out of his shell a lot more. Uh-huh. You know, he yeah. he gains confidence by Andrew's um, relationships with the the lads. Yeah, and. Uh, so Justin wants to be a part of that in the end, mm-hmm. you know? That's illustrated in those episodes where Tucker's got a, 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 an adult magazine, shall we say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and, and Justin trying to get a look, and, and it's all about yeah. Tucker st- striking a deal, if you do me homework and stuff. That's right. Um, That's when they're, that. they're, they're, they're camping outside with the tents, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I just think that, that I remember things like that actually happening at my own school, you know yeah. what I mean, where... <laughs> Somebody would have some mucky magazines in a locker, you know, and yeah. the younger kids would all want to have a, a try and have a look. So yeah, yeah. I, I I certainly understood that kind of thing happening. Yeah, and, well, uh, I mean, I, again, you know, for a kids' TV program, again, to show that that, that goes on, because there was a there was all that episodes, yeah. you know, like the likes of Doyle was just sat there in class reading one, <laughs> like yeah. not even high. Yeah. When they were in the, the outdoor center, it did get cancelled because poor old Kathy Hargreaves fell over when she was upstairs where they shouldn't have been, and she wrecked her ankle, and that's, and, that's and the outdoor right. center was you know pretty much cancelled. It wasn't. It was never seen again. Never to be heard of again. Really. After yeah, that, exactly. no. <laughs> so. Moving on again, then to series four, and again, you know, just Justin was quite a, in in the forefront there, you know, with like joining the school council, getting put forward by Trisha Yates and and things, and he would all before the, before he was on the school council, he was already holding meetings, with, wasn't he, with 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 some of the kids to um, discuss what they weren't happy with that was going um, that was happening with the, with the school, and again, I watched it the other day thinking. Look, you're a school pupil. The teachers aren't going to tell you what's going on until it happens. That's, you know? that's what I I always loved is about these meetings next to a, a photocopier talking to you know, yeah. teachers like Mr. Hopwood and <laughs> thinking yeah. that these teachers would really listen to these kids with their their ideas and stuff. But, yeah, yeah, it was good fun that way. And and I, and again, it was kind of right for for Justin wanting to be on something like the, the school council. Uh-huh. You know, he did. He did the quizzes as well, didn't he? Does yeah. the the, the, the yeah. quiz and and uh, I, and in the end he gets excited about the idea of trying to ban the school uniform. So yeah, yeah, he, he gets quite militant in the end. You know? and, <laughs> yeah, no, I just think it's great that I, I love the scenes where in in, in the council that you know uh, Justin and Trisha Yates agreeing on things yeah. is amazing <laughs> as well. You know, yeah. you wouldn't have believed that in the first series. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. No. Series four has got quite a you know a, a few a few bits in there. Um, the first sort of I think big big thing was the girls had that band, and Justin and Andrew we watched the the performance of mm. of Kathy Hargreaves singing Black Widow, and yeah, it's a phenomenal performance, isn't it? You know, oh, uh, amazing w- w- when you watch it. Yeah. I mean, how, how how many times was did, did she have to sing that? I'd say you'd be amazed, really. I mean, she had, I mean, she's a great talent and a, and a fantastic singer. Uh-huh. I think probably maybe two or three times. And, and only then that would have been for uh, camera movements, you right. know, being in a studio and stuff. Yeah. But, wow. I, I mean, you can tell by the genuine reaction of the people and the band were, were great as well. Yeah. Um, 
Oh yeah, she really gave a performance in that. I mean, the, the and, other uh, two girls were good as well. The, the, uh, yeah, the, the backup superb. singers, like yeah, absolutely brilliant. I, no, I that just... was something. It really it, it gave a, a great light on Kathy as a another uh, part to her character rather uh-huh. than just being like the girl that hang around hung around with Trisha Yates. You yeah, know? definitely, definitely. Uh, great performance. Great. Performance. I, um, so then there was also the trip to France. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, the, all, all the problems with the ferry and stuff. What, what was it like filming that? I mean, obviously, Paul Paul McCarthy talked what? a little bit about that in his like. But what was it like filming that? Uh, it was great. It was. Uh, we had a, a great laugh on that. The thing, the um, the trip to France was was hung like a a carrot to us all. Like you know, if we <laughs> get permission for a second series, we're going to do an episode in France, and you can imagine us kids going, "Oh my god, that'd be brilliant!" You know, yeah. and then. <laughs> The second series came by. We still haven't been to France, so we all kind of <laughs> thought it, it might not be happening. You know, it'd be just back in Beaconsfield again. But um, yeah. oh, it was great, and uh, um, Paul and I got on brilliantly. We um, shared a cabin on the boat together. All right. Um, a hotel room. They they just um, they all allotted you rooms. You know, we had to share yeah. with. And I was with Paul, and we just had such a laugh. And and to be honest with you, we all got up to um, quite a lot of nonsense on the boat. You know. Because yeah. I don't know if you know Neil, the um, it was a trip between Portsmouth and San Marlo. Right. Um, it's meant to be a quicker a journey in in the storyline, uh-huh. but because of filming is so slow with only one film camera, we we did six crossings. Um, wow. Right. Three out, three back, and we weren't allowed to get off the boat because right. of the ferry and <laughs> safety reasons and stuff. So we lived uh, aboard this this ferry and. Uh, in between filming, we just got up to, you know, no good. I mean, really, yeah. we were pr- pretty wild. And it was <laughs> such fun. I mean, really great fun. And uh, the the amount of people who were uh, seasick on us. And um, there's yeah. one 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 time a friend of mine called Gareth, he, he's uh, in one of the episodes, um, was not feeling too well. And he stepped out. This is outside of filming. But he was still in his costume. Right. And slipped on what he thought was just water coming off the sea. Um, but it turned out it wasn't. It had been someone previous is, um being ill. Oh, no. <laughs> and because it, 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 it was his costume, he had to continue wearing it for continuity. So oh. the, the poor wardrobe people were in, in toilets, hand washing, <laughs> uh, desperately trying to get the smell out. And um, oh. the poor guy had to wear that for the filming. And it didn't properly clear. So um, oh, no. there were scenes of us, even on the yeah, on the on the coach, you know, when we're being sent back, and yeah. Justin is looking out the window miserably. Um, it's also because the coach just rank, you know, reeked of this uh, poor boy's costume. Yeah. Oh, um, was that? I can't think of his name, but the lad who you're with quite a bit in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Gareth, Gareth Mason. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, he's another one of my my gang from the early days who'd come to. He only lived over in uh, in Brixton. So he used to come over on a Friday as well, and uh, uh, he had some uh, speaking lines and stuff. He yeah. went on to become a, a really uh, world famous um, ceramic artist now. Oh He's, wow! You know he has he has exhibitions in New York and everything. And, oh um, brilliant! But yeah, he, we had a great laugh with with him. Um, yeah. So it was a good trip, uh, yeah. and and uh, being on that boat, we only actually spent one night. In um in France in San Marlo, they let us off for one night. <laughs> and we all went out for a, for something to eat, you know. And yeah. we were given all the seafood and stuff. And, and we were kids; we weren't interested in that kind of thing. So half no. of the things they gave us, we didn't want to eat, you know. Yeah. But um, but then it was back on the boat, back on the boat, back and forth, back and forth. It was mad. Oh. I have really good memories, and again, a good story with as Paul McCarthy. I was listening to to him, as I said, and um. Yeah, it was a, a good time and clever, a clever storyline. Yeah, although it, ru- although it ruins it for everybody. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, yeah, good times, very Typ- good times. Typical lads ruining it for everyone. And then in series four, obviously, yeah. it was the big thing with Andrew and and, and Andrew well, having a rough time at home yeah. and, and, and turning to drink, yeah. and, and there was all comical, comical escapades. Um, yes, in the, of in the corridors. Hide. Yeah. yeah, which you know yeah. is it, quite funny, but it, it had quite a you know a serious tone behind it, didn't it? Because obviously, yeah. it, this lad who he never really did anything wrong, 
and then all of a sudden, you know, he, he's got he's gone through which which similar in in a certain way to the the later series with Zamo and and, and the just say no and and, and, exactly. the and stuff like that. But similar to the, the, this young lad who didn't really have any, any any sort of major problem, but then all of a sudden, he, you know, he's uh, his life's got turned upside down, and he and he turns to drink. I was going to say, didn't he play it well? Though? Oh yeah, brilliant. You know? There brilliant. was a lot of heavy dialogue, you know, he had on his young shoulders mm-hmm. there to. To, to pull that off, um, yeah. difficult scenes. Yeah, again, a really clever bit of writing and and thinking of, you know, the directors and everything to, to tackle a subject like that. Yeah, definitely. And, and to see the kid getting into drinking and stuff at school uh-huh. as well. Uh-huh. Well ahead of its time. Yeah, like my opinion is there's one scene where Justin looks at Andrew and it's like Justin's kind of, he looks like he's upset that he hadn't noticed there was yeah. something wrong yeah. earlier. Yeah, I th- I think that's a good point you pick up there because, you know, there are scenes with, with Andrew and Justin and Andrew's trying to tell Justin about the rows at home. And, uh-huh. and you know, I, I think for a little bit, Justin's not realising how much Andrew is upset and how much she's trying to tell him yeah. that things aren't good at home. And I think that look that, um, that the director gave us, you know, when he's in, in the cupboard there where we're hiding him and yeah. that shot of Justin's face, uh, really does show that he suddenly realised what a horrible time yeah. he was going through, you know? Definitely. And uh, and I often think that probably Justin would have felt quite guilty that he wasn't there as much for uh-huh. Andrew as Andrew was always there for him, if you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, it was a tough, a tough part for, for Mark to, to play, and as I said, he did it brilliantly. He did it really, really well, yeah. Okay, so then a little bit more light-hearted after that was the, you mentioned it already, was the quiz. The, the end of oh, the yeah. same quiz yeah. between the, the male and the female. And you know, when I when I watched that the other day, I just thought they couldn't have picked. There was you and Matthew Cartwright. So it was Justin and Matthew Cartwright. That's right, Matthew, just thought, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, without being audible, you know, not uh, not stereotyping what, what, what the no, school quiz team would have been. But it was just, yeah. it was just these two. They, you know, the, the, surely there was someone else. Yeah. In, like, um, in fact, I'm going to have to have a look at that again myself. That's a good point. Thinking yeah. about it, you know, the the, the two the two nerdiest people <laughs> in school to pull together. So, it's funny because um, I think Justin goes to give an answer, and you see Matthew Cart sort of elbowing yeah. him as if to say that's the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I can't remember. Does does, does Grangeville win that? I can't no, it, it was it was between the lads and the girls. Oh, that's the lads and the girls, that's right. Yeah, okay, so there yeah. was there was a quiz, there was a few other things yeah. going on. Like there was yeah. bacon and there was netball and, and, <laughs> and, and things like that. Yeah, and then I have to mention this. In that after that series had gone out, yeah. At the end of the year, there was a Christmas special, which was written by a Blue Peter competition. That's right, Blue Peter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now that that's the very first episode I remember watching. Wow. Um, I, I don't really remember it before wow. that, but I remember Is watching. There... It was a strange one to do, you know, because we were kind of disappearing as characters, really, anyway, at that point. Uh-huh. You know, as the new, the new generation were coming in. Yeah. And so we, we hadn't been spending as, as much time as a group together. So it felt kind of, I don't know, not awkward, but it was weird that we were all back. And the idea of being that we were still all together, at, you know, in, in school. Yeah. So it felt kind of, I think we all felt slightly removed from it. And, Right. And a lot of us were thinking about going on to do different things, even if it wasn't acting anymore. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, it was a good episode, though. It was uh, the the thing I remember the most about that, and I always think it's like people knew it, the, the fame that Tucker had in the episode of Blue Peter, where they went behind the scenes of filming yeah. that. Um, they, they had to get a, like a blacked out security fan for us to ride in. Right. Because the... Uh, the, the rumours of us going to the school or y- a youth centre had got out. So there right. was hundreds of screaming girls out there for, for the lads, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they had to wow. take security and there were police and and we were like bundled in, like you see the early days of the Beatles, into the, <laughs> yeah. into the, into the hall, you know, without getting uh, ravaged by these girls wanting yeah. autographs and stuff. So it, it was a really interesting point to see how big Grainshell had got at that point. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah, um, as a team of us together, and they climbed on the roof where we were filming, wow. and there were these like of a gymnasium. You know, you have those kind of like small windows at the top of like climbing frames just to let yeah. the light into the gymnasium. And these kids and girls had got on the roof, 
and they're Mommy. banging the window, screaming for Tucker. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was mad, absolutely wow. mad. How how did Sods handle that though? Uh, well, he, I mean, he's always been brilliant with it, and I think, I think it's a bit. Um, that you you have to in the end, you know. Right. But however small your character is, you you are known when you go out and about, you know. And as I yeah. say, good sometimes, bad uh, a lot of the time. Um, but he he did it great. I mean, wonderfully. And you know, when yeah. he was asked if they were um, kind of organised more, signing autographs and everything, um, uh-huh. he would do it without a problem. But yeah, absolutely amazing to see that kind of reaction. Yeah. To, to him, yeah. it really. Was a, proving the point that what an icon of a character he had yeah, become, you know, definitely. absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, it, the weird thing about that as well, though, the uh, the director who did that uh, episode, um, I hadn't seen uh, since I he was the director of Clifton House Mystery. Right. And it was so odd to be working with him back on Grange Hill. It was, yeah. it was amazing. A lovely man, Hugh David, his name was. It was great. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, that was a good good time again. There's no really bad times at all. I've only good good memories and. Excellent. Excellent. Drill, that, you know. That's what we like to hear. Um, yeah. So then that was the end of series four. Mm. And then series five came in and you, you, you've touched on this already about how there was new characters coming in and, and and your cohort was sort of appearing less and less. But is it right that series five, you were only in one episode? The IMDB yeah. listing is that is I'm going off far away. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I doubted myself because people have asked me, how many series were you in? And I've always said I was in uh, five series. And, you know, I've got the, the, the DVDs from when they first came out yeah. of, um, up to series four. And I think five came out a year ago or whatever. Uh-huh. And I haven't seen it yet. So right. I, don't, I don't know how little I was in it, but I think it was only one episode. Yeah, really, it's just it? a school council meeting. That's oh, what right. I've got down there. Oh, which, right. But like, like you say, yeah. not, there was less... Yeah, we kind of walked out of the door one day. We were never to be seen again, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that, that's, the, that's the best way to leave a programme, that, I think. I think so, um, <laughs> I think so yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so that was that was the end of, of Grange Hill. And, um, th- well, uh, 39 episodes, that's uh, according to IMDB. Yeah. Like, that's, I guess, it's not the most reliable of sources, but that's, that's no. all I've got. Like, and, um, I think that sounds about right. So... You know, how did you feel about leaving? It was it was very sad to go because it'd been as much a part of my young life as as my real school was. You know, right. I, yeah. I, in between filming, I still went to my normal um, comprehensive school in Bromley, and uh-huh. uh, so it, it was a big tug, you know, having to to say goodbye to people. Although, uh, you know, we did keep in touch. As I say, the little gang of us that were, yeah. we still we would meet up and 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 socialize and stuff. But it was it was. Um, very strange that had come to an end. Yeah, and and the weird thing is, people would still know you and recognise you from that, and yeah. uh, although you weren't doing it anymore. Um, uh-huh. But luckily, uh, you know, um, I, I was lucky enough to, to, to uh, continue work um, for a long time after that. So yeah, it wasn't so bad. But uh, yeah, it was a big part of a, a life. And when it finally does stop, you kind of think, wow, and, and you do look back at it and think. You know, I wish sometimes I'd, I'd appreciated more from the experiences yeah. you had. You're, you're doing so much so quickly mm-hmm. um, to film a series. You don't take it all in at the time, you know? Right, yeah. But, um, yeah, it was very sad. Oh, so so what did you do then when you did leave? Uh, after that, I did a, um, a, a series called The Tripods. Oh, um, yeah. Which was a, a science fiction thing for the BBC. Uh-huh. And... Uh, I did a sitcom um, for uh, Yorkshire Television with Derek Nimmo and Neris Hughes in it. Um, right. It wasn't very good. <laughs> and <laughs> I, w- I was meant to be in the whole of that um, series, but I stupidly took myself on holiday to Spain and crashed on a bike. And nice. uh, I, broke, I broke my leg very badly. That put me nice. out of work for, for two years. Oh, wow. And then when I learned to walk properly again, I was lucky enough to get into theatre uh-huh. And I joined Brist- the Bristol Old Fit Company um, for for three seasons, uh-huh. uh, which was a, like really great training and yeah. such an experience. And then I even did a, a musical uh, with Bonnie Langford in the West End, um, which was mad for me because I can't sing and I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but somehow I managed to get <laughs> get in that, and I toured that for like, just under two years, uh, wow. up and down the country. So uh, yeah. 
But yeah, so I continued for that. And then uh, work was coming in in dribs and drabs. I'd changed agents and things. And uh-huh. I, I, I started to get more interested on, on the other side of things. So right. um, I, when I wasn't able to act because of my broken leg, I, I bought some video equipment and started a little video company making corporate videos and right. weddings and things like that. That kept me busy. Yeah. And then finally went out on the other side of theatre, working on the production side of, of some big shows like Buddy and All right. uh, uh, loads of the ones that went into the West End. Yeah. All based from my theatre in Bromley, the Churchill. Oh, brilliant. And that's where I met my partner and, and that's why I decided, well, I think I'll, I'll knock it on the head now as far as the old acting is concerned. And, uh, yeah. I, I continued working in theatre and, and making videos uh, until I moved. Um, over here to Ireland. So, right. Um, if I can just go back to yeah, a, yeah. a, pro- a program you were in, it, it was called The Country Boy. Now, yes. I, I'm I'm only bringing it up because this this for me was quite interesting. When, when I looked at the cast, there was a it was quite a young cast in that, and yeah. three of the cast were also in Grange Hill. Yeah. Three, yeah. three of the cast included. So there was Mark Bairdis who played. Yeah, that's right. Stupid. That's right. There was yeah. Alice, Do- Alice Dornay who played Alice Rowe later on. That's right. Um, yeah. And Patsy Palmer, who yeah. was a, a supporting artist in Grange Hill. That's for, right. That's for right. Quite a long time. And I, and I just yeah. thought, wow, that's quite a bit of Grange Hill alumni in that program yeah. there. Like, well, it's, uh... How it happened for me was that um, I was in between, I didn't have an agent. Um, I, I had this kind of hard transition from having an agent that dealt with mainly kids and uh-huh. young adults. and I was I was getting older, um, yeah. into my twenties. So I just picked up the phone one day to, to Colin Kant and and said, "Hi mate, do you have any work going?" <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> so he said, "I wish you'd called earlier. You know, I could probably give you something a bit better." But he gave me a small part in that, and it was because um, you know Colin had started the whole Grange Hill series being director. It was uh-huh. lovely. The last job that I did on television was with him again, and. Right. Uh, uh, it was just a nice way to kind of end that part of my of my life. But yeah, um, I think Colin is a, a a great believer of working with people he knows, you know. Yeah. And uh, and that, that's a good thing a lot of the time. So definitely. Yeah, it was a nice little program that I was only in it. I'm blinking, you miss me, but um, <laughs> uh, I enjoyed filming. Okay, then. So you've just mentioned there about um, the fact that you you moved over to the other side of of, of the production mm. and stuff, and mm. and you and you know you, you're living in Ireland. So are you still yeah. doing that now? Then I was until about I would a year before actually even uh, uh, the pandemic happened. Right. I was um, doing a lot of theatre uh, work again behind the scenes, everything from uh, lighting and sound with um, with my partner Donica who's a lighting designer here. Right. And, uh, but I, I in 2001, uh, um, uh, 2002, sorry, I right. was diagnosed with um, multiple sclerosis. Right. And I uh, uh, found work harder and harder to do physical work of like working on stage and, and, and running shows and things. So I, I've had to kind of let that go. I do the odd bit of, uh, filming again. I've made a few corporate videos here uh, in Ireland uh, for different various companies and stuff. But yeah, yeah the the MS now has made it um, has kind of forced me to to retire. Really, you know? right? Okay, I, get I don't you. have it. I, I don't have it as bad as some people have, but it is still, uh, you know, it makes life difficult. Um, not only yeah. f- physical movements, but my speech and. Uh, my vision is particularly bad these days as well. Right. So. Oh, right. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I have a quiet life now. Um, we moved into the middle of nowhere. Um, took down, uh, took up a, a totally run down little cottage, uh-huh. and uh, I've spent years doing it up. And I just love um, growing vegetables and like the good life, really, <laughs> and looking <laughs> after animals. That's why I love doing now. A <laughs> million miles away from green children. Yeah, you're not pushing each other around on trolleys. Or anything like that? No, 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 <laughs> no. no. It's all, it's all like you know, run a bean growing and yeah. uh, keeping donkeys happy and stuff like that and chickens. So, uh, oh, but yeah, yeah. I, it's it's a it, it's a totally different life, but I I, I do love it, and uh, yeah. I can't believe I've been living here now twenty years, and it, wow. and it only feels like you know about two three years ago I moved here. So, right. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's very different from my early days. 
Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. All right. So are you still in touch with anyone from Grange Hill? Yeah, mainly all the ones I mentioned on um, social media. Right. But, um, I met up with Mark Savage, who played Gripper. Yeah. Um, two, two years ago, right. he was over in Ireland uh, making a, a sci-fi film. Uh -huh. And uh, he contacted me. So we met up in, in Galway and we had a fantastic time. Uh, we Jeez. took him out to see all these places out in the wild west of Connemara. And yeah. we both were sitting there having a game of, of pool and a, and a pint of Guinness in the, <laughs> in the pub. And both saying how weird it would be for Gripper and Justin to be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sitting out having a pint play pool in, in the west of Ireland. But um, yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still in touch with Mark. He, he's, you know, he's a, a busy guy now acting and he's got his own theatre company. And we keep threatening to try and, and do some work together sometime, maybe putting a, a little play on somewhere that we could tour yeah. over here. I'll be brilliant. So I'm in touch with him, uh, Paul McCarthy. Uh, uh -huh. and so on. The only person I, I've lost touch with, and very sadly, is Mark Eady, you know, Andrew. Yeah. Um, uh, he, when he left to do, um, Grange Hill, uh, we... We kept in touch for about a year, I think. Right. And then he was doing so well and, and very busy. We just our paths just went different ways. So yeah. uh, um I would I'd I'd love to meet up with him again sometime. Well, Mark, um, if you're listening, you know, yeah. get in touch. <laughs> yeah, in and touch. if you're listening, Mark, you should come on the program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Rob. Yeah. Right. Okay, Rob. Um I've just got a, a, a few more questions just to ask you just, uh -huh. just, just before we finish off. They're all Grange Hill related. Yeah, so go ahead. Er no earlier this year, there was, I don't know if you saw it, there was a big news story about how there's going to be a, a great yeah. deal movie, you know, of Phil Redmond's writing it yeah. and is involved in that. First of all, what do you, what do you think of that idea? I think, it's, I think it's a clever idea. I think that, I, you know, after the program running for, I think it was over 30 years before, uh -huh. you know, it finally was cancelled, uh, I always thought it was a great shame because, there's always more you can do with you yeah. know uh, storylines in a program like Grain Shell. Uh -huh. So when I, I I read about it as well, I thought um, it's a perfect idea. It it can deal with things that were not uh, happening, you know, when when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, storylines that they, they could do now, and uh, I, I suppose it would be a very different kind of a, a production now with all the things that kids have to face. Mm -hmm. But I think it's. I think it's worth it. I don't know. Is it a one-off film or? or yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I th I think it's a great idea, and I think if you kind of uh, what I read is that they might bring some of the old characters in to to link him with the the new characters, yeah. I, I, and I don't know if it's going to be set in Liverpool again or I don't know, but yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. Right. And if you were asked, would we see a return of Justin Bennett? Oh, I don't know. I. <laughs> I uh, hand on heart, I would say I would love to. I yeah. really would love to, uh, but um, I don't know whether my character would have any kind of relevance <laughs> now. I'd probably have to be someone's grandpa, wouldn't I? He's <laughs> like seven. <laughs> so local so, MP, so it's, local it's, MP, well, Rob. I I think yeah, just, yeah, something like that. Well, I, I, actually, Neil, it's interesting. I often thought, you know, if, if in one way, when Grainshaw was still going, Justin was quite a good candidate to come back as a teacher in yeah. the series, you know. And that would have been lovely to do because, yeah. you know, to be in a program starting off as a pupil and then ending your time in the program as a teacher. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he, he could be in it. But again, because of my, my health conditions now, I wouldn't want to commit to something now yeah. because, you know, if I, you never know. They come in kind of uh, attacks the way I get it. So right. yeah. I would hate to commit and then find I wasn't fit enough to yeah. do it, you know. But um, I, I think I really hope a lot of my old... Um, uh, mates get to do a, a cameo in it yeah. Brilliant. because it'd be great to see them on there along yeah. with the new cast as well yeah definitely okay other than Justin Bennett who is your favourite character in Grange Hill oh 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I would probably say well as a pupil I think there are two characters that uh, I love as characters and that would be Terry Supat playing Benny Green yeah he played him with just wonderfully. Todd would have to be there. Um, so many of the girls uh, were fantastic as well. And teachers, I I loved. Um, 
oh, who was the the full master? And, and, and Michael Michael Percival. Michael Percival, played, Mr. Mitchell, yeah, yeah, Mr. Mitchell, and um, Brian as Mr. Hopwood. Yeah. Played, I loved his sarcasm. Both both those people, in fact, had great sarcasm towards the kids. Yeah. Know? In a good way, not in a in a derogatory way. The, the, but, the yeah, they're, of, they're the, my favourites. Yeah, the, they, they were the type of teachers you wanted at school, weren't they? Exactly. You, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, the the other, the, I mean, Lee playing um, Zamo and and uh, Erkan as Rolo and stuff. Uh-huh. Great characters. And it's lovely when you get a rounded character. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where yeah. you you really can believe because some some people you know have to come in the program have about four lines ever. And you yeah. never really get to know them. So, yeah, yeah they'd be my favourites, I'd say. Up there, definitely. And Brilliant. along with Mark as well. As Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. And if I you could... have to say that. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you couldn't have played Justin Bennett, yeah. who else would you have liked to have played in Grangel? Ooh, oh, let me think. Oh, oh, oh. I probably... Oh, there were quite... quite oh. I wouldn't... <laughs> It wouldn't be the character character type, but I, I would have liked to have played someone like um, I would have liked to have played a, a Doyle, to be honest with you. Or, right. uh, yeah, someone. I think I think the kind of the, the baddies have better lines and yeah. and better, you know you can do more with them. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Justin's lines are very kind of repetitive, like "Oh, I don't think we should do that." Or, <laughs> I think we should go now, or you know, so somebody like that, I I, I think would be great, or um. A, Tommy Watson was a great character as well. I liked him, but obviously, I know I wouldn't have been right for those roles because it's just not my type of a, a yeah. character. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, yeah, I think those brilliant, definitely. Okay, so then the last question that I always ask everyone is, why do you think there's still such affection for Grange Hill? I I honestly think it's because everybody. Well, at first it was well made, uh-huh. and I think. Everybody can find themselves in in one of the characters. Yeah, and uh, you know, even when they were kids, they could see the problems that they were going with, and could actually register uh, that was what they were going through at their at their real schools in real life. Yeah, um, and I think it was as a well made, and I think there's great nostalgia. You know, yeah. it's like all the things that we love when we look back at these the nodding head programs, looking at you know the best of the seventies or the best of the eighties. Yeah programs you see on channel five and stuff yeah i think it's because of that really uh and, and beautifully written and created by phil redmond and uh and and well acted i think and directed yeah i think it is that and a lot of uh, in these kind of weird times we live in now i think nostalgia people feel a lot of comfort in that you know um so i think that's that's what it is um but i mean from the one series that we thought it was going to be to run for as long as it did yeah. is incredible. And uh, I, I'm really proud to have just been a, a part of it for, yeah. for one bit of its, its run, you know? Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, Rob, thank you so much. Thank you, Neil. For coming on. And- I really, really enjoyed it. And you brought back some memories there as well. I'm going to have to have a quick look at the... Uh, the quiz episode now, <laughs> Matthew Cartwright. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and I'd also like to give you a, a special thank you for being on your very first Zoom call. <laughs> as well. Yes, that's right. My first, yes. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a whole new thing. I was looking at it and, and I didn't know how to get the camera to work. Or how you got, <laughs> no, I'm going to, my internet connection here, anyone that knows me, follows me on social media, knows that I'm nearly always offline. So, I wanted yeah. to keep it as simple as possible. <laughs> no, yes, thank you for being patient with me as well. <laughs> well I really that. enjoyed it. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on. And thank you. You're more than welcome, Neil. For, for anyone who's listening, I'll speak to you next time. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.